Oh, it is one of the best weeks of the college basketball season, and we are so excited to be here at the Battle for Atlantis, the beautiful Atlantis Resort here on Paradise Island with a loaded field of teams. In the first game of 12 to be played here in Atlantis over the next three days, we will get a look at the fifth-ranked team of the nation, the North Carolina Tar Heels, as they take on the upset-minded Butler Bulldogs. It is a loaded field here in Atlantis with four ranked teams, including Carolina, five of the nation, Wisconsin, number two of the nation. Oklahoma was just ranked last week. This field is stacked. There's going to be some great basketball coming your way. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Bahamas. Dan Schulman and Jay Bill is very excited to be here for this tournament. North Carolina, a lot of change from last season to this season. How talented, how good can this team be? North Carolina is very good. They're deeper, they're more athletic, and I think they shoot it better than they did last year. And any time, Dan, that you play North Carolina, you've got to be concerned about their transition. That means you've got to take care of the ball. I think Butler's going to be looking to pack it in defensively and force Carolina to prove it over the top. They've got to keep the Tar Heels off the offensive glass and no second shots and they have got to find Marcus Page he's one guy that you cannot let shoot and prove it over the top because Marcus Page the lefty is an outstanding shooter and scorer he can hit coming off of screens he can create his own shot he is very patient he doesn't force it he's a legit candidate for the wooden award this season and last year he was 60 percent of this team's three-point offense this year about the same so other guys are going to have to pick it up but you've got to find Marcus Page early They'll take on the Butler Bulldogs today. Butler fans will remember a win over North Carolina in Maui two years ago, and of course, back-to-back -back trips to the national championship game in 2010 and 2011. But in the last three years, three conferences, three coaches. So it's been a bit of a bumpy road with more. Here's Andy Katz. That's right, Dan. Chris Holtman is the interim head coach for the Butler Bulldogs. He's taking over for Brandon Miller, who's been out under the Family Federal Medical Leave Act, and that's happened since October 2nd. And in talking to Butler Athletic Director Barry Collier, he hopes that there will be some sort of resolution around January 1st or 2nd, which would make sense because you've got 12 weeks under that federal act. Now, I talked to a number of different players since we've been here at Paradise Island. They said that it's been a smooth transition playing for coach Chris Holtman. As for Holtman, he says he's relied heavily on those veteran players like Roosevelt Jones. Back to you, Dan. All right, Andy, thank you. So Roosevelt Jones healthy this year, missed all of last season with a wrist injury. They are thrilled to have him back as they enter their second year in the Big East. And it's interim head coach Chris Holtman, as Andy was talking about right now, at the range for the Bulldogs. Alex Barlow, Kellen Dunham, who can really shoot it. Roosevelt Jones, Andrew Schravis. And Cameron Woods, uh, the Butler lineups, the uh, starting lineup today presented by Atlantis. Roy Williams' team is off to a 3-0 start, but the competition level will definitely go up here this week. A couple of national championships for the Hall of Famer, Coach Williams. Here's the Carolina lineup presented by Atlantis. You know about Marcus Page, Justin Jackson, a freshman, and then up front, J.P. Tokido, Bryce Johnson, and Kennedy Meeks, who is off to a big start this season. Butler's in white, Carolina's in blue, here inside the Imperial Ballroom at Atlantis, as they put together a court with about 3,500 seats. And we have uh, some early motion there by J.P. Tokido, all excited to go. We'll get it started now, and it'll be Carolina ball. North Carolina is gonna look to go inside. Bryce Johnson might have been partially rejected there by Cameron Woods. Well, that's one area where North Carolina is going to have to go up strong. Butler's smaller, but they are strong, and they use their leverage. And a Butler turnover, and it's going to be a travel. And Roy Williams isn't unhappy with Kennedy Meeks. He didn't want the pass going to Meeks in transition on that part of the court. Now you want to get the ball out quickly for North Carolina to push the tempo, get more possessions. But Bryce Johnson has to be intelligent about who he throws it to. And Kennedy Meeks getting it at midcourt isn't where Roy Williams wants to have the ball. Terrific guard. Sorry, Jay. Terrific matchup. Justin Jackson defending Roosevelt Jones. 
Keep an eye on that matchup. 21 in white, 44 in blue. Jackson's got length. He can really shoot it. Just a freshman from Texas. Misses the three. Dunham down with a foul. With a uh, rebound, rather. And he is fouled by Tokido. Helen Dunham's a guy two years ago in Maui in a game that you did as a freshman. Hit five threes as Butler defeated Carolina 82 to 71. And that score flatters North Carolina. Yeah, and Brad Stevens in that game was getting on Kellen Dunham about passing up shots. He said, look, you get an open shot, let it fly. Jones with a drive, off-balance runner, no good. Offensive rebound, shot clock does not reset. Shrabis will put it up, and the tip is good for Jones. That's the kind of start that Butler wanted to get off to, and Andrew Shrabis is going to be a big key in this game. Not only his ability as an undersized five to rebound, but to pull guys away from the basket. Jackson with a drive to tie the game. Justin Jackson in the very early going this year is averaging better than 13 points per game, a freshman for Carolina. Butler wants to handle North Carolina's pressure and make them guard for a good portion of the shot clock. If they get something early, they're going to take it, but they want to make him defend. Jones drives by Jackson, rejected by Meeks. Got it back, but stepped out of bounds, and it'll be Carolina ball. That's a play that I'm not sure Kennedy Meeks would have made so easily last year. Here's the offensive possession after the screen and the ball reversal. Jackson, who's a good shooter, just putting it on the deck. He's got a lot of game. But Kennedy Meeks not only getting off his feet and being a little more explosive off the floor, but moving his feet. He was about 320 pounds when he arrived in Carolina less than 18 months ago. He's about 270 now. Not a finished product by any stretch of the imagination, but you can see the upside he's got as the weight comes down. Well, he's such a good offensive rebounder and solid inside. He's, even Roy Williams has said that he thinks he can be more explosive off the floor getting up and trying to get into people to draw more fouls. He's gone to the bench now, and Desmond Hubert, number 14, is coming to the game for Carolina. Jones is not a shooter, does not have a good jump shot. He'll score on runners and floaters. There's one from Dunham, and Butler back on top. That's something Kellen Dunham has really added to his game. He's a great shooter, but now he's starting to drive it. He's got to really start to get to the free throw line more as the next thing in his game. Here's Bryce Johnson, turnaround. A little bit strong, and so far, not very many second opportunities at all for North Carolina. Nice block out by Shrabis there. Butler's smaller, but they really use leverage. They stay low, especially on defense. Dunham misses the three, and the rebound to Page. And that was a heck of a rebound by Marcus Page. Didn't just take off, he stayed the rebound with his bigger compatriots. Scoring's a little more balanced in the early going for Carolina this year. Page has more help than he had at times last year. Great feed from Tokido to Jackson. Tokido's already had a game this year, Jay, in which he recorded 10 assists. Well, he's a good passer, but you got to make him take jump shots. He's so explosive. Barlow, count it. A three-pointer for the former walk-on, Alex Barlow, 7-4 Butler. Well, it's difficult, but you've got to be on there, there on the catch and make Barlow and Dunham drive it. If they get tough twos, that's one thing. They can't have open threes. Johnson, shovel pass, and Woods read it well and got in the passing lane to take it away. Cam Woods has got some length, doesn't he? Terrific rebounder. Led the Big East in rebounding a year ago, better than nine a game. There's Shrabis trying to draw a big guy away. He can play pick and pop. Barlow the kick, Dunham in the corner. Left it short. All these ball screens are designed to move Carolina's big guys around. Johnson, a little push off in good position to the assist to Page. Now how about that pass? And he saw that and just gave a little signal to Bryce Johnson. And you got to be tougher than that in transition to take away an easy layup. That was way too easy for North Carolina. A flex cut screen for the screener. And Dunham gets open. Long rebound. Woods doing a great job. Active early. Dunham gets another look at it. And Jones with the uncontested rebound, but he can't finish. Well, if he had gone straight up, Jones had an easy layup. Page using the screen. Look at that pass into Johnson. 
Carolina is starting to find its legs offensively. Marcus Page is such a good player, not just a scorer. Doesn't go too fast. Plays with great pace. Good start to game number one here at the Battle for Atlantis. Travis with a pass fake, the drive, and he's fouled before the shot by Hubert to take us to the first media timeout of the game. Up and down they go. Butler competing early against Carolina. Barlow knocking down a three from the wing. Carolina coming to back, though, with a basket of I. Johnson, and the Tar Heels have a one-point lead. is brought to you by Atlantis Paradise Island Bahamas. Discover the wonder of Atlantis. Visit AtlantisBahamas.com. NASA Paradise Island. It's better in the Bahamas. And the Paradise Island Tourism Development Association. Experience paradise in a whole new way. Welcome back to Paradise Island here at Atlantis. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Andy Katz. And if it looks a little bit different than your typical basketball environment, it is here. We are inside the Imperial Ballroom, where, as we mentioned, they bring in about 3,500 seats. And it's a low ceiling. It's got kind of a nightclub feel to it with the lighting, Jay, but it all works. It works great. And the floor is fantastic. It's really a good look for the players. And the sight lines are, are really good for shooters. all the way into the backcourt for Dunham. And if people were counting five seconds, all the inbounder has to do is get rid of it in five seconds. Doesn't have to be touched for any period of time. Barlow in traffic. Shrabis with a three. Second three of the game for the Bulldogs, and they're back on top. And that's a big basket for Butler, not just because it gives them the lead, but now it can pull big guys a little bit further away from the basket, and you can attack the rim. Of the game now for Carolina, Theo Pinson, another member of the very talented freshman class. Meeks has returned. Isaiah Hicks is in the game as well. Page will launch and hit. So the one guy that you can't allow to get a shot off from the from deep is Marcus Page. And Butler had a hand up on him, but there's not another player out on the floor that can make threes like he can. He's the one guy you have to see. You can pack it in on everybody else. Very good athlete in Tokido trying to defend Dunham. Now Woods, nice kick. Barlow's wide open. And Meeks down with a rebound. Meeks has had a couple of double-doubles already this season. Also a very good outlet passer. Carolina fans will remember the Louisville game last year. He had an enormous afternoon. Tough catch by Hicks. And Tokido turning into a great distributor this year. Had some good assist numbers last year, Jay, but he's taking it up a notch this year. Well, that was Carolina's secondary break. He got the wing back screen and popped out, and then they have a little post-to-post -post screen, cross screen underneath, and it is really difficult to defend. You can see that little post-to-post -post cross screen underneath. It doesn't matter whether you switch it or try to get through. Those are big bodies. And unless you have pressure on the passer, Kellen Dunham did not have enough pressure on J.P. Tokido. So you have, you have to make choices. If you're going to pressure Tokido, maybe he can drive it. You'd rather have him take that shot because he's not a great shooter. But if you don't pressure him, he can pick you apart because he's a good passer. Changes for Butler now as Roosevelt Jones knocks down the first. Jones, one of the top performers heading into the year in the Big East. A guy who, as we mentioned, missed all of the last year with a wrist injury. He's a very unconventional basketball player, but a very talented basketball player. And we have a lane violation on Carolina, so Jones will get another opportunity. Now, Roy Williams doesn't like that. Roosevelt Jones does not have the prettiest stroke in basketball, but he's a really good player and an excellent passer. Hicks will turn around hook is short got it back and puts it home Isaiah Hicks really likes the Bahamas <laughs> he averaged 15 points here over the summer Carolina played a couple of games here in the summer tour they're actually here the same time Kentucky was playing their six games in eight days boy that's a strong move there by Barlow 
You notice that little left shoulder he put into the defender to create that space? Nate Britt, the defender, he's now taking the place of Marcus Page at the point. Britt, a sophomore, forced into a bigger role last year than expected. The season-long suspension, eventually the dismissal of P.J. Hairston, and it's an offensive foul as Barlow steps in to take the charge. Barlow is a smart basketball player. A guy that has got everything out of his ability level. A very good off-ball defender, as he just showed there. Now, that to me is a block, but it was called a charge because he slid in there, and he was still moving as Theo Pinson left the floor. And by the definition of a charge, he just didn't get there. But that's such a bang-bang play, it's missed quite a bit by the officials. Austin Etherington is into the game for Butler number zero. He is a, a transfer from Indiana. Corner three not there for Keelan Martin, a freshman. And Carolina, as always, trying to push the pace. Whenever you ask an opposing coach what's important against Carolina, transition D is the first thing you hear. It's gigantic. Even after a make, you have got to get back because they are looking to push it and get something easy and early. And it puts you into scramble mode. And you can't run back just looking for your man. You've got to run back looking for shooters and to protect the basket. And the one shooter you got to find is Marcus Page. He's not on the floor right now. Barlow, nice look. Martin, the kick. Dunham puts it on the floor. Extra pass to Etherington. Great ball movement. Now another offensive rebound, this time by Weidman. And Martin is going to be called for the offensive foul. A timeout on the floor. Carolina leading by two here in the Bahamas. When we come back, a closer look at their talented group of freshmen. Welcome back to Atlantis. Carolina leading Butler by two, 11-17 to go in the first half. There are a number of very deep and talented freshman classes in America this year. Three of them, three schools, have three freshmen who were ranked in the top 20 of the ESPN 100 entering the season. The Duke Blue Devils, folks have already seen a lot of that trio and of this trio as well. Kentucky so deep and talented again. North Carolina's class features Justin Jackson, Theo Pinson, and Joel Berry. What are you expecting, Jay, from this group? Well, this is an excellent crop of freshmen. Justin Jackson, one of the best scorers coming out of that freshman class, the 2014 class. And I think Joel Berry is going to be an outstanding point guard in the future. He'll be very good this year. But I think the damage he's going to do for North Carolina is going to be more into the future. And Theo Pinson's an excellent uh, prospect. He's strong, athletic. He brings really good energy into the game. There's always a lift when he seems to come in. Let's check in with Andy Katz. Well, obviously, these recruits are not up to that level, but Chris Holtman telling me that uh, a sign of stability in the fact that they picked up Nate Fowler and Sean McDermott, two recruits during the signing period that were recruited by other schools at their level, and it showed that they are able to recruit to Butler regardless of who is the head coach but uh, Chris Holpin saying that these guys signing in November was a great sign that there's stability in the program regardless what happens with Brandon Miller as Andy talked about Brandon Miller's on a medical leave of absence and sometime around the new year the situation will sounds like it'll be resolved one way or the other but there are many people who seem to feel as Barlow knocks down another one that Miller will not be back and that Chris Holtman will have the interim tag removed Jay there's a travel on Joel James and that Holtman will have the interim tag removed and that this is the future of the Butler program. Well, Chris Holtman's an excellent coach. Now, I don't know what's going to happen, whether he's going to wind up getting this job or whether Brandon Miller comes back, we'll see. But he's an excellent basketball coach. Did a great job at Gardner-Webb. Uh, was an assistant to John Gross at, uh, at Ohio U. So he's got a lot of experience, really understands the game, and he's a heck of a teacher. Travis with the drive and kick, and Martin misses the three. Down with the rebound, Hicks. But Butler's getting shots. They just have to knock him down. And how about Alex Barlow? He gets knocked to the floor when he's trying to guard Marcus Page on the screen and then comes down and knocks a shot down right after that. The lob will result in a foul. Pinson looking for Hicks. Well, here's how we stand here. This is game one of the battle for Atlantis. Our next game coming up next year on ESPN2, Oklahoma and UCLA. Then we will have the semis for you tomorrow. And then the third place game of the championship game Friday 
as tomorrow's daytime action and Friday's daytime action will all be on ESPN. Some great matchups in this tournament, including a chance to see the second-ranked team in the nation, the Wisconsin Badgers. Wisconsin is really good. I mean, they're right up there with anybody. With their experience level and how strong they are with Frank Kaminsky, who I think is the most difficult matchup for any big guy in the country. I mean, he is really, really outstanding. The Oklahoma-UCLA game that we'll have next should be very interesting, and you could say the same for Florida and Georgetown tonight. I think both those games will be high scoring. I'll tell you, Dan, Butler in this game has done a really good job of moving the ball, moving the defense, and getting the shot that they want. They haven't knocked down as many perimeter shots as you might expect, given how open some of them have been. What they've really done, by moving the defense, they've opened up the offensive glass. And North Carolina is going to have to start limiting this team to one shot. Travis, Martin, Jones, Barlow, again, good ball movement, blocked from behind, though, by Pinson. Jones, another battle on the glass, and here come the Tar Heels. And Page turns it over. Pinson couldn't handle the pass. Woods turns it over. Good hustle, getting back by Page. And how about that heady play by Page? Makes a mistake, then makes up for it. And the jumper will rattle in for Pinson. The lead grows to three for Carolina. And Butler is not getting up and down the floor, but they are moving this defense all over the floor. The passing has been magnificent. Jones now posting. Floats it up off the back of the iron. Keeps it alive, though. Barlow with a slip. Eventually, a travel is called on Barlow. But Butler is one tough group of players. They may be smaller, they may be a little bit less athletic in spots, but they are going after him. There's a relentless nature in this team to go after the ball. And they don't accept less from themselves. It's really impressive to watch. Obviously, a program that with a couple of coaches, but Brad Stevens most notably when they went to the national championship game in 2010-2011. The Butler Bulldogs, their players became household names. Everybody admired them so much for how well they did. Moving from the Horizon League to the A-10 to the Big East, losing their coach to the Boston Celtics, losing their one of their best players, Roosevelt Jones, to injury last year. And now the situation with Brandon Miller and Holton taking over as the interim coach, that's a lot for a program to absorb in about three years. It is a lot. And Butler accomplished things in 2010 and 2011 that were absolutely amazing. Now, they had some NBA talent on that team. You know, Shelvin Mack and Gordon Hayward were NBA players and are NBA players. This team doesn't have NBA players, and now it's in the Big East. And that's really one of the interesting things about college basketball. I think the narrative when Butler was accomplishing so much in 10 and 11 was they're the little engine that could they get it and uh, and look at look at how they do it with less and now now all of a sudden they're in the big east and their coach is coaching the celtics yeah. <laughs> it's interesting how that works yeah. tokido rises up for a three air ball and the bulldogs come out so that's a shot that butler will invite jp tokido to take it's a shot he can make but he will not make a high percentage and tokido has got to make this game about stopping kellen dunham Another offensive rebound. Jones finally gets one to go. If North Carolina can't get the ball, they've been tapping it out. That's been advantage Butler. They're tapping it back out, and Butler's getting it. Off the fingertips of Johnson, out of bounds. Ro Roosevelt Jones is only 6'4", but he's got long arms, and he plays like a guy who's 6'8 or 6'9 inside. Terrific job boxing out in there by Cam Woods getting inside position, and Jones after it was knocked out, able to get to the rim. He's really a, a 6-4 point forward. Yep. Jay, the Butler Bulldogs have nine, nine offensive rebounds in this game already. And Carolina's got a bunch of turnovers, too. So you add yep. those possessions up where Carolina does not get a shot and a chance for their own offensive rebound. And Butler's getting second opportunities. Yep. And they don't have to shoot a great percentage to score. You're exactly right. They've taken 11 more shots than Carolina has, but... They're only shooting 27%. Page. What that's doing also, Dan, is making Carolina play more defense than they play offense. They're playing twice as long on defense as a result of that. 
Timeout on the floor. 7.27 to go in the first half. A good game one with Butler hanging in. Down only two to North Carolina. The place these eight programs get to call home for the next few days here over Thanksgiving. The battle for Atlantis. A great early season tournament. We can tell you the likes of Gonzaga, Connecticut, Syracuse will all be here next year in 2015. This is the Imperial Ballroom where they play the games. And this is the field, and it is loaded. North Carolina, UCLA, Florida, and Georgetown playing tonight, by the way, in a first-round game. Our next first-round game this afternoon here on ESPN 2 is Oklahoma and UCLA. And the Hoyas are in the house getting ready for their game tonight against the Florida Gators. With more on that game, here's Andy Katz. That's right, Dan. There is some major injury news with the Florida Gators. Eli Carter, who's got a left foot injury, did not practice yesterday. Dorian Finney-Smith did. He's got a left wrist injury, and Billy Donovan after practice telling me last night that it's going to be sort of a game-time decision for Finney-Smith. He did not think Carter was going to be able to play based on the fact that he wasn't able to practice yesterday. We'll have to wait and see what happens tonight. All right, Andy, thank you. Even if Finney-Smith plays, Jay, that's really only seven scholarship players available to Billy Donovan at this point of the season. Yeah, and I think Finney-Smith will play. Eli Carter is the one that's really the issue, but they, Florida doesn't really have a post presence like it had last year in Patrick Young. Still a really good team, but they're young in spots, and I think Billy Donovan would agree that they were overranked at the start of the season. But by the end of the season, I think you can see them right up there. There's Barry into the game for Carolina coming up with a steal. And it will stay with North Carolina. It was Barlow hustling back to deflect that ball out of bounds. Barlow's had an, a, a sensational 13 minutes of basketball. Today. Well, not surprised uh, as well as he is capable of playing. A guy who's always locked in, especially on the defensive end. But North Carolina, I mean, they've already got eight turnovers. They've given up nine offensive rebounds in this game. That's a lot of extra possessions. Pass. And Meeks with good deep position can't finish. And down with the rebound is Woods. And Woods led the Big East in rebounding last year. He's not a, a big wide guy, but he is long. Barlow. Off to Jones, Travis misses the three, and the rebound down to Tokido. And Butler is getting open shot after open shot on the perimeter. And they have really made this Carolina defense move. Jackson off to Barry. And over the back, Bryce Johnson. More great Feast Week action. The Orlando Classic starts tomorrow. Quarterfinal action on ESPN2, Santa Clara, Tennessee. Kansas taking on Rhode Island, Michigan State, and Ryder, and then Marquette and the Georgia Tech. The championship game Sunday. And Kansas isn't going to have an easy time with Rhode Island. E.C. Matthews, a terrific player that can really score. It is a two-point lead for North Carolina. Got him driving on Page. And what a block by Meeks. Out of bounds. It will stay with the Butler with 16 on the shot clock. Cone Dunham is trying to drive the ball more this year because he is getting crowded by Marcus Page. And Page did a really nice job of keeping that angle, not letting him get into the lane, but not fouling as well. You know, just because you, you give somebody a little bit of an angle to the basket, you can still angle into the, the midline and get rid of it. Hicks forces the turnover. Page comes up with a loose ball for the Tar Heels. Hicks doing a nice job of posting up strong. Now Page coming off a screen. Right hand and draws the foul. Butler Bench did not like the call at all. It's going to be on Woods. Woods got that ball up top. I'm not really sure whether he brought that arm down and caught a piece of Page. That's not much there. That's a clean block. And that's the second foul on Woods. So that is a critical call. As he will have to go to the bench. And they'll lose some size and some rebounding here as Etherington comes into the game. Etherington can stretch the floor, but he is not the same kind of shot blocker, shot changer that Cam Woods is. And one of two for Page. Well, I think Butler's got to continue to use their big guys to set ball screens. 
uh, to try to pull Carolina's big guys away from the basket, move it side to side, and then attack. Because they've kept North Carolina really on a string. Roosevelt Jones. And if you haven't seen a lot of him, that's in his playbook. That might be play number one in his playbook. That's really his, his shot, yep. the floater. And a steal now by Barlow. And Butler is back on top. And this is really about two things. It's about turnovers by North Carolina, and it's about North Carolina allowing offensive rebounds by Butler, and Butler going after those rebounds and taking them. Chokado, a foul by Jones. Joe Barry, the freshman, lets go with this ball. Well, here's Jones turning down the ball screen. Ball screen coming to his right, and he just turned it down. Then Barlow tried to get it to, excuse me, Barry tried to get it to Marcus Page, but Page was trying to curl that top screen, and he wasn't even looking. He threw it right into his back, and Barlow was seeing the ball and was able to take it the other way for an easy layup. We mentioned that a couple of years ago out in Maui, Butler defeated North Carolina. You can make a case that Butler team was better than this one, and you can make a case this Carolina team was better than that one. But still, for those players on, on the two sides, and there are some who were in that game, everybody, he sure remembers it from a couple sure. of years ago. But, but Butler's not afraid of North Carolina. Yeah. The, not only the fact they beat him two years ago, but the fact that Butler's in the Big East now. I mean, they, they play big-time schools. This is not, you know, some shot that they're getting to, at, at the brass ring. You know, they've been there, done that. Carolina back on top after the free throws. And Butler is doing everything that they want to do in their game plan. And right now, North Carolina has got to be sitting there feeling like they have been shooting themselves in the foot with their turnovers and with allowing second shots. Everett Rebound Chokido. Well, does that ball move when Butler's on the offensive end? Page with a shot fake. Scoops it up, no good. And rebound down to Etherington. That's one of the few times where Marcus Page looked like he was a little bit out of control on that drive. Over this position by Shrabis. But meets with too much size. Another opportunity, and Martin gets the floater. Well, you play decent defense, even though Shrabis got a great angle. That post that he had, he was he was lower and won the battle because of it. And there's where the Woods foul hurts. Etherington giving up a lot of size in the matchup with Hicks. And the ball's reversed. Butler's going to have to make a choice. They're going to have to get some pressure on the ball to keep that pass from going in there. Barlow turns the corner. A little strong off the rim. Tokido, tough shot. Putback is good. Kennedy meets Carolina by three. And Chris Holtman will use a timeout. Barlow hobbling a little bit as he makes his way to the bench. Carolina by three, 326 to go in the first half. We have seen how important Alex Barlow has been to the Butler Bulldogs in this game. And he was hobbling a little bit as he went to the bench during the timeout as we get another look. Stepping on the foot of Tokido, probably the most common way, Jay, that a, a player rolls his ankle in a basketball game. No question. Anytime that there's an ankle injury, it seems like eight times out of ten it's from stepping on somebody's foot. Usually it happens on an offensive rebound or when one guy jumps and the other doesn't. They're playing through it. The Bulldogs down by three. Dunham with a drive, a little push off on Page, and he knocks it down. That was a big push off on Page, but it was a great <laughs> offensive move and an aggressive move. Page looking at the official saying, where's the call? Well, Dunham's actually bigger and stronger than Page is. There's no question that was a push off, but a great move. Here's Britt. Can't get the shot off. Pinson driving on Dunham, leans into him, follows it. Bryce Johnson with a finish. But Pinson, that was a very impressive second jump to go after that tip. And Bryce Johnson there to clean it up right after it. Barlow looks like he's dealing with that angle just fine. Martin, the freshman, 23 points in Butler's last game, a win over Loyola at Maryland. 
Dunham got Page in the air and lost it. Well, Dunham was able to get past Page, but he went right into a set defense. And Butler's had success moving the ball. They're not going to be able to attack one on one. Britt for three. Misses it. Britt, who Carolina fans know, has switched from being a lefty shooter to a righty shooter this year. Uh, long jumpers, but he misses the three, and now he commits the foul. Timeout on the floor. Here at the Battle for Atlantis. Game one's off to a great start. All right, Steve, thank you. Looking forward to that game with the Villanova. Also looking forward to the EA Sports Maui Invitational Championship later on tonight, 10 Eastern time, as Arizona takes on San Diego State. This game is a part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. Number three against number 15, Jay out now. That'll be a defensive struggle on the part of both teams, because both teams are excellent defensive teams, especially San Diego State. But how about the half that Alex Barlow has had? He hasn't had a good first half. He's had a great first half. He's controlled the tempo on the offensive end. He's been excellent on the defensive end. Rolled his ankle, kept playing. Difference between pain and injury. He's been the player of the game in the first half. No question. Got 11 points to lead the Bulldogs, to lead all scorers, in fact. Isaiah Hicks leads Carolina with eight. Roy Williams is going to bring in three subs at the next opportunity. Barlow has stayed step for step with Marcus Page, has not allowed him really any open looks. The one three that Page knocked down, Barlow was all over. Page just four points, one for four shooting so far here in this game. He is a second half player, but he's going to be a second half player in this game because Barlow's not let him have a first half. Barlow's a guy who had one Division II offer coming out of high school. Amazing. Making Page work hard for that shot. And a good rebound in traffic by Weidman. And it's Meeks over the back with a foul. And Weidman did a terrific job, the freshman from Indiana, of boxing out Kennedy Meeks. And that means he gets to walk 94 feet and take a couple of free throws. And with Woods on the bench, Chris Holtman looking for all the size he can get on the floor right now. So he's brought in Weidman, the freshman. 6'8", 245. Rattles on the front end. You can see some of the games coming up on ESPN2 later today, including Jay and I bringing you Oklahoma and UCLA. Steve Alford's son, Bryce Alford, moving into a starting role this year. And Jay granted against weaker competition than they'll face here with the Bahamas. Bryce Alford is putting up some monster numbers so far. Well, he averaged 38 a game in high school in New Mexico. <laughs> He's averaging 20 points a game and almost 10 assists. Yeah. It's like nine and a half assists. Really amazing numbers. And his turnover numbers are next to zero. He's got a five to one assist to turnover ratio. And the foul going against the Bulldogs. Justin Jackson will be heading to the line for North Carolina. What do you like about what do you like best about his game? Well, he can shoot him, and he's got a varied offensive game. He doesn't do anything great, but he does everything well. And the freshman out of Texas has got a really nice offensive game, and like Marcus Page doesn't force anything. I mean, you don't see him coming out there jacking up shots, and he's got a, a very good understanding of how to play and play with other people. Right into a starting role at the outset of his freshman season, Jackson is 6'8", and he, in effect, is the two-guard in the starting lineup for Carolina. Tokido at 6'6", on the wing, a spectacular athlete. Bryce Johnson, the four-man, at 6'9", with a great length, and then a slim-down Kennedy Meeks. There's a lot of length and size for this Carolina lineup. The ball is knocked out of bounds, and it just was lost, is the ruling, so it goes back to the Tar Heels. And Keelan Martin just knocked, lost that out of bounds when Kennedy Meeks who was up out near half court, hedging a ball screen, had to get all the way back down to the baseline. And Butler has really moved him and Isaiah Hicks around. Jackson the lob and meets the finish. That was pretty. Really good job of setting the screen and then rolling to the basket. What a difference in Kennedy Meeks from last year to this year. 
Long three is there for Martin to bring Butler back within one. And Carolina will hold for the last shot. Well, Martin had that shot, but he also had Austin Etherington in the corner. But Butler's offense was terrific in this first half. Tokido got it. Got time if they hurry. Martin off the rim to bring an exciting first half to a close here in the first game of the battle for Atlantis. North Carolina leading by only three against Butler, 35 to 32. Andy Katz is with the interim head coach of the Bulldogs, Chris Holton. All right, thank you, Dan. Chris, when you went into this game, what did you need to do well that you actually did accomplish here in the first 20 minutes? You know, I think we spaced them offensively. We defended Page uh, well. Um, and those were those were keys, obviously. You're going to have to defend the post against Carolina. You're going to have to be great on the glass against Carolina. we got to improve in those areas, handle the ball a little bit better. I like the fight of our guys. Got a little bit of foul trouble, but uh, finish the half well. How do you assess the job that Alex Barlow did at both ends of the court, especially on Page? He is terrific at guarding guys like Page, and Page is a terrific player. He's great off the ball. Uh, he na uh, navigates screens exceptionally well. And he's one tough kid. Thanks, Chris. Okay, thanks. Andy. Back to you, Dan. All right, Andy. Thank you. A lot of tough kids on that team. And it's a three-point game. Barlow and the Bulldogs only down by three against North Carolina. Steve Weissman, Seth Greenberg, Jay Williams, the Land Rover Halftime Reports coming your way. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Stop into Lowe's to save big during Black Friday. You're watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. If you're down, get up. If you're in, get out. Pop a top and fire up this party. Hey, hey. We just getting started. Welcome back to the Battle for Atlantis, all a part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. We're here on Paradise Island. They named it well, whoever came up with the name. Time now for the first half stats from today's game, presented by the Nassau Paradise Island. Promotional boards, Carolina leading by three. Butler forced some turnovers, had a ton of offensive rebounds, but as you can see, didn't do a great job turning those offensive rebounds into points. They didn't shoot the ball well, otherwise they'd have maybe a sizable lead, but Alex Barlow is really the guy who stood out in that first half. Yeah, Butler got about every shot it wanted because it moved the ball. Its offense was really good. It just didn't knock shots down, 4 of 15 for free, but Alex Barlow was the player of the game in the first half. He had 11 points. He controlled the game on offense, knocked down some open shots, was able to cross over and get into the lane, discard Nate Britton, knock down that shot. And when he had an opening, he took it, but his defense was the most impressive. Got the steal here, but he chased Marcus Page all over the floor and was the only player in the first half that played all 20 minutes. And Butler needed him for every one of those 20. Andy Katz had a chance to speak with Roy Williams near the end of halftime, Andy. Well, Roy told me, look, we've got to do a better job boxing out. And he said offensively, They've got to get Marcus Page shots, much in the way that Butler has done a good job of getting their key players shots. And also, by the way, I did speak with Alex Barlow. I asked him about that ankle. He was hobbling at one point. He says, look, I'm fine. The fouls on Justin Jackson. Chris Holtman referenced a little foul trouble in the first half for the Bulldogs. Cameron Woods missed the last few minutes after he picked up the second. Roosevelt Jones picked up two in the first half as well. Jones with the offensive rebound. Barlow rattles home a three to tie it. Well, just a killer. The best time to shoot a three is after an offensive rebound. And Butler has gotten a lot of open threes off of offensive rebounds because they've gotten so many. An alert play. You can see Shrabis just pushes Kennedy Meeks right underneath. Roosevelt Jones gets it, has the presence of mind to get it out to Alex Barlow, who's stepping into that three unguarded. Johnson with a spinning eight-footer to put Carolina back on top. Well, that's his game. His turnaround jumper is outstanding. Really high release. Really impossible to block. He's a guy who's been trying to put on weight over the last couple of years, get stronger, but what he lacks in strength. He sure has a nose around the basket, but Alex Barlow is not to be denied right now. 
Marcus Page had to help out on Kellen Dunham, who got freed up off a screen on the right-hand side of the court, and that left Barlow wide open on the left. An excellent pass by Kellen Dunham. Barlow has now made four of five threes. He's got a game-high 17, and Carolina turns it over again. Well, Carolina runs good stuff, but they are not executing very well at all. Barlow lost it, and eventually it's out of bounds off him back to the Tar Heels. As Kellen Dunham is coming off this screen, it's a, it's a staggered screen, and Marcus Page helps out and winds up leaving Alex Barlow wide open. And Barlow has been shot ready. When the ball gets to him, he's down in the stance and ready to shoot. And again, to revisit a point you mentioned in the first half as Barlow knocks it away, a guy without any Division I scholarship offers coming out of high school, right? And had one Division II offer. Yeah. It's not like it's the Division II programs were all yeah. over him. He just was overlooked. Tokido, fadeaway jumper, short. Meeks, put back, no. Johnson underneath, battling for space, called for a travel. Well, Butler getting what it wanted. J.P. Tokido taking a challenge jump shot. They've really packed it in. North Carolina's not gotten anything off of drives. And they haven't been able to knock down perimeter shots. Jones and Jackson. Baseline drive, Jones. Shovel pass underneath and Woods with a slam. That's the second time in this game that Roosevelt Jones has turned down a ball screen and gotten all the way to the rim. And are they executing well? They haven't necessarily shot it well the entire game. But they're moving the ball beautifully. Page misses a three. Woods takes it away from Tokido. Butler is just playing stronger. Barlow. Too strong. Shrabis runs it down. Turns it over. Carolina getting all it can handle right now from Butler. Good hands by Jones. It'll stay with the Tar Heels. Roosevelt Jones on the left side of the floor. About to get a ball screen. He gives a little head and shoulder fake. And he is gone baseline, refusing that screen and going right past Justin Jackson. Roy Williams doing very little sitting and doing quite a bit of standing and pacing on that Carolina bench. He is not happy. Meeks would turn around. No, but a foul is called. And it's going to go on Shrabis and send Meeks to the free throw line for two. Well, that's a good call. What, what winds up happening a lot in college basketball now, because you can't use the arm bar in the post, guys are putting their hands up and committing a felony with their lower body. And Travis just threw his body into Meeks. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was, actually, but it, it, it looked like a foul, a bad foul from my angle here. And the referee was basically on the same angle. But the point's the same, whether that was a ton of contact or not. What guys are doing now, what defenders are doing in the post, is just throwing their body into the offensive player and knocking them on the low end. And it's really disruptive to a shooter. One of two for Meeks. Oklahoma, UCLA coming next here from the Bahamas here on ESPN2. And then more action from Maui later on in the day, including the championship game tonight on ESPN Arizona and San Diego State. J.P. Tokido is still on Kellen Dunham. He's done a good job on him. Dunham is 0 for 5 from three-point range, and Dunham is going to get called for the foul there as he lost it and then upended Pinson. Tokido just knocks that ball away. And he is, he's been on the all-defensive team in the ACC over the last couple of years. But Roy Williams has said that Marcus Page has graded out as their best defender overall. He's really challenged J.P. Tokido to be an even better defender and to be a, a shutdown defender. And he's done a good job on Kellen Dunham today. Cross court, Tokido with a 17 footer wide left, and as you said, they will invite jump shots from Tokido. With a little bit of late pressure, but I'll tell you, there are a lot of teams that are going to be looking at this tape 
to say this is how we want to play North Carolina. Dunham finally gets one to go from beyond the arc. There's no underneath on that, and he's going to pull the trigger on it. Page with a drive. Tough turnaround is short. Down with a rebound is Barlow. And he lost it out of bounds on the pressure, so it will be Carolina ball when we come back. Game one of 12 coming your way from the beautiful Atlantis Resort here on Paradise Island. The battle for Atlantis. And Butler trying to pull off an upset here in the first game of the tourney. How about Butler, a five-point lead on North Carolina early in the second half here in the Bahamas. As we mentioned in the first half, these two programs met two years ago in Maui. Jay was at the game, and Rodney Clark, unlimited range. He had 17 points for the Bulldogs. Marcus Page was a freshman then. He had 13 and five assists for the Tar Heels. But Kellen Dunham, then also a freshman, five threes for Butler as they beat then ninth-ranked North Carolina, 82 to 71. And Dunham, Jones, Barlow were all a part of that Butler team a couple of years ago. Yeah, Butler was a better basketball team in 2012 than it is right now. And North Carolina was not as good as they are right now. And Butler has really been disciplined throughout the course of this game. They have played the way they want to, not the way North Carolina wants it to. And they're heating up from beyond the arc, too. They're now 7 for 19 shooting the three. I felt that was just a matter of time. They were 4 of 15 in that first half. Jones, another rejection for Meeks. That's at least his third block of the game. Make it his fourth block of the game for Kennedy Meeks. Driving from the top, they're more likely, you're gonna have, more likely to have to go over one or two North Carolina shot blockers. When they've gotten some ball screen action, side pick and roll, they've gotten a little bit better action. I'll tell you one thing, you can't go under screens on Kellen Dunham. North Carolina's done that a couple times. If they do it again, He's going to hit. Turn in the corner. 15-footer, no. Offensive rebound, Woods. Up strong, too strong off the glass. Rebound, Meeks. And Meeks really kept that ball high after that rebound. And Page fouled by Dunham. That will be the second foul on Kellen Dunham. Nobody in the game has reached three yet. The only way that North Carolina is going to get easy shots, they're not going to get it in the half court against this Butler defense. They're going to have to get out in transition. And that means they're going to have to play better defense. And their defense isn't done until they get a defensive rebound. Page for three. Jackson with a rebound. Good job by Pinson to get in there and keep that alive. Carolina's one for nine from three-point range. Page inside this time, and he's heading to the free-throw line. Well, that was a really good drive. A right-hand drive along the baseline by the lefty Page. He's got such good body balance. I'm actually surprised even with the contact that he didn't finish that. His concentration level is so good. And Jay, two quick fouls on Dunham. Now three in the game. Two players getting ready to check in for Butler. And Dunham is among those who will be coming out. Now, Dan, any time you play against a shooter and a scorer, one of the ways that you can slow down that shooter or scorer is to make them guard. And Carolina is trying to make Kellen Dunham guard. And you know that Butler's tried to make Marcus Page guard. You've really got to go after Marcus Page on both ends. He has Outstanding the player as he is, you've got to attack him. You have no other choice, because if you don't, he's going to attack you and he'll win. Jones doing a lot of the ball handling at times today, along with Barlow. And a turnover. There's where the length that Justin Jackson paid off, getting into that passing lane, just getting a finger on the ball, and caused the turnover. than six minutes into the second half. The Butler Bulldogs leading North Carolina by four, 43-39. Pinson off the screen, tries to put up a wild shot, and there's a foul going to be called. 
on either Weidman or Woods. It's Weidman, and the signal from the official Jeb Hartness is he brought his arms down. Well, he can bring his arms down as long as he doesn't make contact. Yeah. That's, a, that's lame. There's no foul there. I mean, I'm all for protecting shooters, but that was bailing out a, a bad situation. A wild shot. Pinson misses the first free throw. 6'6 freshman from Greensboro misses them both. Ranked as the number 10 incoming freshman in the ESPN 100. Dunham's got three. He's on the bench. Four other Bulldogs each with two. Baseline Jones and another block by Meeks. Jay, that's five. Yeah, Jones would have been better off passing that out, but he refused another one. And a chance for three for Isaiah Hicks. Jones refusing the screen on the right side, taking that ball right, and another block by Kennedy Meeks. He took it to the other side of the basket. And this is where North Carolina's at its most dangerous. The pass ahead by Pinson to Jackson. He dumps it in to Hicks, and the nice finish. But that put a lot of pressure on the rim. And that's really the only way North Carolina's going to get easy opportunities, that and the offensive glass. Pinson the save, but it's Butler ball. And it's Martin. The foul is good. Weidman getting down the floor for Butler. How about the answer by the Bulldogs? What a game. Back to a four-point lead. Page just wrapped up, and we're going to have a flagrant one called on Barlow. Remember, there's no such thing as a, an intentional anymore. So this is going to be two shots and the ball. The ruling being, obviously, that Barlow did not make a play on the ball. Good call. Jeez, that, that's like watching an eclipse or, or Haley's Comet. Marcus Page missed a free throw. He's the all-time leading free throw shooter in North Carolina history. 87% in his career. Makes one of two. The definition of a flagrant one, excessive and or unnecessary contact and not a legitimate play on the ball. And by that definition, that's a flagrant one. If you make a play on the ball, it's just going to be a common foul. But Barlow just kind of wrapped up Page. So Carolina gets one free throw and the ball back. Hicks short. Carolina's going to have to make some adjustments because Butler is switching off those staggers. And the Tar Heels have not reacted to it. Patience by Barlow, now the drive, and another rejection. This time it's Hicks. Now when North Carolina is being moved around, Kennedy Meeks was moved around on ball screen action. Isaiah Hicks stayed home on the weak side. So whenever there's a drive, I think Butler's going to have to look to drive and kick and not necessarily drive and finish. And Jay Roy Williams has made another substitution. Another foul going against Carolina. It's on Hicks. Jackson Simmons has come into the game for the first time. He's a former walk-on, and generally, if Roy's not happy with how some of the other guys are playing, Simmons goes in there and gives them great blue-collar effort, grit, energy, that kind of thing. Right now, Dan, the foul situation favors North Carolina. It's 7-3 in fouls. That means Carolina, on every common foul, is going to shoot free throws. Butler has to get four more to shoot a free throw. Drive by Mark, and it'll go. Butler bench wanted a, an and one, but they'll take the basket. That increases the lead to five. Chris Holtman's eyes light up when he talks about Keelan Martin. And there's another steal by Barlow. What a bad pass. He's got Martin with him. And Pinson would not let him jam it. But Martin's going to the free throw line for a couple. And the underdog is taking it to the favorite right now. The underdog has some bite. How about this behind the back? And Keelan Martin, we were just talking about how Chris Holtman's eyes light up talking about Martin. He says he's wired to score. 
And he wants him to play with a free mind and just think about scoring. Doing the right thing, but he wants him to be out there looking to score and hunt his shot. And he was hunting a dunk there. How about that behind-the-back pass by Barlow? What happened to, you know, Indiana kid making the right pass, you know, the, back, the jump stop, bounce pass, a measure in the basket in Hoosiers. Forget that. He's going behind the... He's going Maravich on us. One thing that you, you hear all the time and you see when you do a Butler game, with the exception of Woods, who's trying to put on weight, I mean, they got some. They got some bodies on this team. They got some strong kids. And Martin, as a freshman, looks like a senior out there. Nearly another turnover. Boy, Carolina ragged on this trip. Look how low Butler stays on defense. A travel on Justin Jackson. Another Carolina turnover. Butler with the ball and the lead and the momentum here in the second half. In the Bahamas, Bryce Johnson and the Heels trying to stay in it. But it's the Bulldogs looking to add another notch to their belt. Welcome back to the Battle for Atlantis. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Andy Katz. Butler leading North Carolina 48-42. One area where Carolina's winning, though, is blocking shots. Well, they have been sending some back when they've been attacked off the dribble. I think Butler is going to have to do a better job when they drive of kicking it out and reversing it and getting an open shot. That will be open, but when they've tried to take it off the bounce and get it all the way to the rim and finish over Carolina's size, especially Kennedy Meeks, you saw Isaiah Hicks block the last one. They've not had as much success. Seven blocks of the game for North Carolina. Let's send it down for more. Here's Andy Katz. Thanks, Dan. Kennedy Meeks has actually lost 55 pounds. That's what he told me yesterday. He was 320 before that. He says, look, I was simply disciplined, not eating late, not eating a lot of junk food. He says he's got tons more energy, can run the floor much better, and now can die, deny passes in the post a little bit more, run the floor, dunk it. Things he told me a year ago he'd have no chance to do. I spoke with uh, Jonas Serration, the strength and conditioning coordinator for North Carolina, and he said, you know, Meeks has done a good job, but as far as he's come, there's still much uh, there's still a few more steps that he could go to really take his game even to the next level too. well to become more explosive yeah. and that's the next step Henry Meeks has got a great feel and he's a terrific player excellent offensive rebounder Barlow with the drive and that's deflected out of bounds it stays with a Butler 12 on the shot clock yeah, Butler is attacking they're moving the ball it's not been moving side to side as much as it did in the first half or earlier in this half I'm just not sure that continuing to try to take it off the dribble and take it yourself. If they kick it out, I think there's something really good for them. Weidman trying to back his way in. Woods couldn't finish, but there's a foul on Carolina, and Woods will head to the free throw line. Jackson Simmons gets called for the foul. And Carolina's just not getting first contact. They're not getting a body onto Butler offensive rebounders. It's Butler that's making the contact and pushing Carolina underneath. These early season tournaments are where coaches find out a lot about their teams. You play three games in three days. You play it against good competition. Win or lose, one of these teams is playing Oklahoma. One of them is playing UCLA tomorrow. There are no easy games in this tournament. Meeks and Johnson are back in for Carolina. Woods will get a breather, and Edrington returns for the Bulldogs. Everything that Chris Holtman put into his game plan has worked out. They haven't shot the ball as well as they're capable of shooting it, but other than that, Butler has played exactly to the game plan, and it has worked. Meeks going to work on the inside and draws the foul to be Roosevelt Jones. With a swat on the arm, says Don Daly. So to the free throw line goes Meeks. North Carolina's got to start taking advantage of this free throw line because they are going to be there if they continue to pound the ball inside for the rest of the half. They are 11 for 19 from the line on the game. That was a real sore spot for the Tar Heels last year. Carolina last year had its worst team free throw percentage ever. And it's a team that really battled. I mean, they thought it was a, a solid defensive team. They played really hard. It's just they, they couldn't collectively make perimeter shots or free throws. One of two. 
Six point lead bundle. Weidman. Oh, yes, he did. A little two step down on the baseline and turns it over. Saturday in an historic Big Ten rivalry. It'll be Michigan taking on Ohio State, noon Eastern on ABC, and then the Seminoles trying to stay perfect in their showdown with the Florida Gators, 3.30 Eastern time on ESPN, a rivalry weekend in college football. I love the college football playoff. And now all kinds of contact up top. Barlow gets called for a foul. And more free throws coming for Carolina. And the guy who hardly ever misses, even though he missed one in this game, Marcus Page. And Carolina ran a little set where they try to bring Page through a, an elevator screen where the doors just close on the defender yeah. and Barlow grabbed him. And Barlow had a look on his face like, well, what do you want me to do? There were two guys there, and I just tried to get between them. <laughs> and look at how big they are, and I'm just trying to get through here with nobody knowing about it, and I get called for the foul. Marcus Page has missed two free throws in this game. I don't think I've ever seen a game where he's missed two. We have we have but four for eight on our monitor. Is that right? He's missed four for eight for an 87% career guy. Elon Martin with a corner three. Biggest lead of the game for Butler. And as the game goes on, you wonder if North Carolina get a little bit tight. And another foul. This time it's Etherington called for a push in the back. See the little screen up top, and then the kick. And I don't really think that J.P. Tokido needs to come off to defend because Roosevelt Jones was angled out toward the short corner. You come off a good shooter, and Keelan Martin is a good shooter. You're playing right into the hands of Butler, but it's it's hard to do, especially on the ball side. You know, NBA teams never come off a corner three shooter. Barlow to the bench, Dunham back into the game with three fouls, and Carolina continuing to hurt its own cause at the free throw line. Now 14 for 25, 56% on the game. The one, two, one, one, full, full court pressure. They break, break it easily. And Mark pulls up for the three. And Meeks down with the rebound. It's two free throws, Jay, the rest of the way for Carolina. Britt with a full head of steam. Follow no good, but the ball. I think Butler wants to use a little bit of clock and move this defense. They got Barlow on the bench right now, too. Yeah, but they got a point guard yeah. in the game. Roosevelt Jones is a point guard. Left-handed scoop, no. Brick to Page. Boy, what a closeout by Roosevelt Jones. Tokido for three. Well, that's a shot that Butler will give J.P. Tokido all game long. If they, get a refer if they get the ball out of the hands of Marcus Page and they trade a three by Page for one by Tokido, that's a good trade for them. Dunham can't get by Britt. Now into Travis. Count it! How about that shot by Andrew Travis? Going against an outstanding athlete and defender in J.P. Tokido. He just went right into his chest. Now, you could argue, is that an offensive foul? Maybe. So what? It's a terrific finish by Travis. Well, you talked about it a little bit in the first half, Jay. It's accurate to call Butler an underdog in this game. It's stretching the point to call them like a Cinderella. Yes. They, they believe they belong in every game against anybody on any court. Well, they clearly believe because yep. they went into the Big East. Yep. And they've been to two national championship games in the last five years. Stepping in to take a charge is Shravis. Well, two really positive plays in a row by Shravis. Not a big fan of that kind of charge, but it was a great play by him. Got the call. The lead continues to grow, but now it's saved by Etherington. Boy, they're making all the hustle plays, too. And all the alert plays. Yeah. Barlow's back in. Martin again. Martin again! 
Timeout, Carolina. Doesn't matter which tropical paradise we're in, North Carolina has a lot of trouble with Butler. Butler went four of 15 from three in the first half. That has not been the case in the second. The Bulldogs are five of seven from behind the arc, and Keelan Martin, the freshman from Louisville, Kentucky, has been especially good knocking down a couple himself. He's very confident in this game, coming off of 23 points and seven rebounds against Loyola. And he has really added a lot of energy and firepower to this Butler offense in the second half. Jay, what does Carolina have to do, or what does Marcus Page have to do to get going? The All-American is one for eight, seven points in the game. Well, you give a lot of that credit, if not all of it, to Alex Barlow for the way he has chased him all over the floor. But Carolina's got to finish plays. They've gotten the ball inside at opportunities, and they haven't finished. Page in and out. There's another play where Marcus Page has an opportunity to finish it, doesn't get it to go down. And now they're going to have to play 25, 30 seconds of defense. In the second half, Carolina's 2 for 14 from the floor and 6 for 15 from the line. And driving again is Martin. If there are any freshman jitters for a guy like Keelan Martin in the first game of this magnitude of his career, he's sure hiding it well. And he's playing with house money right now with a 13-point lead, a chance to make it 15 right here. And the idea that North Carolina would score only 45 points to this point in the game. And who could have predicted that? Could you have predicted that Butler would be right with Carolina? Absolutely. But would you have thought, well, Carolina's only going to generate 45 points of offense in over 30 minutes of play. Well, and 35 of them were in the first half. They've got 10 points in almost 12 minutes. It's amazing. It's amazing. Carolina ball. Now, Butler is a, a great object lesson in playing low, that the low man is going to win. They are not tall. They're not especially big, but they use great leverage. It's like a little two, three zone right now for Butler. Inside to Johnson, and he's fouled. Could be Shrabis from behind. Now it's on Etherington. And again, two free throws coming for the Heels. Well, there's still a lot of time left in this game. And one thing that, even though North Carolina not a great free throw shooting team, Butler does not want to send them to the line and have them scoring without the clock running. Four different Bulldogs, each with three fouls. Cameron Woods, Roosevelt Jones, Kellen Dunham, and Austin Etherington. Butler has got to be ready for a full court pressure from North Carolina after this free throw. And here it comes. Britton Tokido up at the top of it. With some token pressure, really. Now Britt one-on-one -on -one trying to stay with the Barlow. Good ball movement. It's Dunham. Travis keeping it alive. And he's earned the Bulldogs another possession. Travis just outworking North Carolina's big guys. What effort by Andrew Travis. Butler ball with a 12-point lead when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Atlantis Paradise Island, Bahamas. Discover the wonder of Atlantis. Visit AtlantisBahamas.com. The Paradise Island Tourism Development Association. Experience paradise in a whole new way. And NASA Paradise Island. It's better in the Bahamas. And welcome back to Atlantis here on Paradise Island. What a setting and what a tournament this figures to be. And look at this in a game one. Butler with a 12-point lead on North Carolina. We're coming right back at you 20 minutes after the conclusion of this one. As Oklahoma takes on UCLA. UAB in a Wisconsin tonight. Florida and Georgetown will have the semis for you tomorrow. And then the third place game and the championship game on Friday. Give us a thought on Oklahoma UCLA. Well, it's going to be high scoring. And Oklahoma can really score. And the Sooners right now have the Big 12's leader in scoring, rebounding, and assists. Three different guys. Yep. Steal by Tokido. <laughs> he can finish, can he? <laughs> he is a high flyer, and that's exactly what Chris Holtman did not want to see from his team. 
turnover, easy basket the other way, a little bit of momentum for North Carolina, and the crowd into it. Here comes the scramble. And a reach-in foul going against Carolina. J.P. Tokido just shoots the gap. Able to knock that away with his right hand, and no doubt about the finish. Right now, North Carolina, the half court, is looking to trap. And when they trap, I think Butler's got to be able to take advantage of it. Got to negotiate that trap. They were able to get a foul. Now they get a couple of free throws. But you got to negotiate that trap, find the open man, and then attack. Jones uses all of the rim before it bounces in. A unique shooting motion. Mm -hmm. And the, as unique as the free throw motion is, it pales in comparison to the uniqueness of the jump shot motion, but you don't get a chance to see that very often in the game. But again, that shouldn't overshadow all of the other talents that he exactly. has. Exactly. He was just about to say that yes. he may not be a great shooter, but he's an outstanding college basketball player. Johnson absorbs a bump. In and out, and the rebound to Woods. Still a lot of time. Barlow. Any drive, I think that Butler will be able to kick it. Dunham looking for help. Travis tipped away. Carolina has stepped it up at the defensive end, and Joel Berry will miss the layup, and they play on. Well, how is that not a foul? Woods up and under, no. Shrabis, no. It will stay with the Bulldogs. Well, Joel Berry did a terrific job of getting that ball off the steal and taking it to the bucket. Uh, unless the referee just thought uh, he's body seeking and Kellen Dunham couldn't do anything, but they've called that a foul every time on the defense in this game. Barlow. And he's called for the offensive foul. That should be the third on Alex Barlow. Marcus Page was the one drawing that charge. And remember, the way the rule is being interpreted this year is different than last year. If the defender is there before the offensive player leaves the court, he's there in time. But I know what you're going to say, but Page is still kind of shuffling moving. and sliding. Yeah, he was yeah, moving. Yeah. And that, that's really the interpretation of the rules. You've got to be set without moving. And look, the officials are so used to calling it the old way that we're probably going to see a lot of bad calls on charges, and that was one of them. But you just have to get used to it. That's the way it is in college basketball. Another Carolina turnover. The turnovers have killed North Carolina in this game. Turnovers and the inability to finish plays. And you give all that credit to Butler because the Butler defense has been terrific. Dunham with a deep three. It's kept alive by Woods. There's the kick off the drive. Barlow, no. And good call there. Jones with a push off. And for Roosevelt Jones, that's his fourth. He becomes the first player in the game to pick up foul number four. Even with Cameron Woods driving the ball, they are going to be able to kick it. And if they kick it to an open shooter, they're going to get something open. At the line, J.P. Tokido. Well, he's had to chase Kellen Dunham all over the floor in this game. Doesn't look the least bit tired. Another missed free throw. Martin in for Jones. They lose a very good player, but they bring in a, a freshman in Keelan Martin, who in the minutes he's had today has played very, very well. well Keelan Martin doesn't bring all the different intangibles that Roosevelt Jones brings, yeah. but... Boy, he can shoot it. Got 15 in this game. He's made three threes, all of them big ones. And Carolina keeps splitting free throws. And they are now 17 of 29, 59% on the game.
freshman Barry getting some minutes of crunch time for Carolina running into the screen of Shravis does it look like Johnson called it out good pass by Shravis and the three won't stay down for Dunham tell you what Shravis fights for every ball he's not a guy in the layup line is going to catch your eye and there he is forcing the turnover but boy does he grow on you when you watch him in a game he just fights you tough kid and Dunham called for the offensive foul. Boy, it has been a charge-a-thon here today. Or a block fest, depending on your... Yeah, I'm, I'm just not a big fan of... You know, and, and Hicks was there before he took off, so that was, a, that was a good play. But with secondary defenders coming in, and Dunham has to be smarter. When he drives in there, come to a jump stop and kick it out. And then maybe you can get a second drive, but... Certainly, you might be able, putting pressure on the rim, you might be able to get an open shot. And, Jay, that's four on Dunham. Page can't hit the three. Ball's loose. Britt gets the roll. Down to an eight-point deficit for the Tar Heels. That would have been a lefty jumper last year, a righty jumper this year. Well, you got to be some kind of skill to have that happen. Martin. Woods with a follow. There were three Carolina defenders there, and nobody blocked out. Well, that's what happens when got multiple guys go to block a shot, is that leaves the offensive glass wide open. Now Johnson, and he's called for the offensive foul. On the drive, anytime you have guys that are going after a blocked shot, you better rotate down because that leaves the offensive glass wide open. That's another non-charged charge. And he was late getting there. Butler breaks the pressure. Travis leaning in on Johnson. No, got it back. Dunham. Down with the rebound is Britt. Good block out there by Hicks. Well, how quick to the ball has Butler been in this game? They need this one, and they get it from Marcus Page. And a timeout taken by Roy Williams. 30-second timeout with the deficit down to seven. Well, anytime Marcus Page comes off a screen, he is ready to shoot. And Roy Williams really trying to fire up his team. Comes off that screen, Dunham goes underneath, and you can't do that. You've got to chase him off that because he's the only guy on the floor that can really hurt you badly from three. You go underneath the screen, that allows him to get a, some room and a little bit more rhythm for his shot. And now North Carolina's got to make it happen on the defensive end. They've got to play good defense without fouling. And we're just getting started here at Atlantis. That's, that's right outside the Imperial Ballroom, the arena, right in the hallway where they have all the banquet rooms. The Oklahoma Sooners using the hallway as a makeshift uh, area to get ready for their game against UCLA. Just a hop, skip, and a jump away, Dan. <laughs> And in case you're wondering back at home, yes, Jay is using the Adonis room <laughs> as his personal quarters this week. And I will admit I stole that line, but unfortunately for Jay, I stole it from him. <laughs> 3.20 to go. Media timeout at the next whistle. Can Butler pull off the upset here in game one? Using some clock. Travis and Hicks really going at it. Shot clock's down to five. Barlow launches. Still loose. And Woods has it and draws the foul. Yet another offensive rebound for the Bulldogs. Boy, there were more white shirts on the offensive class than there were blue shirts on the defensive class. You Butler know, has been tougher. You know, it may be a paradise down here, but they've come to take care of business, and they're 256 away from pulling off an upset.
right now. Steve Weissman, Seth Greenberg, Jay Williams in studio following the game. What have you seen so far? Butler's playing to win. Every single possession is important. It seems like Carolina, they're just playing. 27 offensive rebounds for Butler, but this could be Marcus Page time. Mm, he just Ooh. hit that three. Forecast. We will also break down Oklahoma and UCLA. That's coming up following the game, guys. Hi right, guys, thank you. Yes, Butler is in the Big East now. Their second year in the Big East. It's been a good start to the season for the Big East. Villanova, you know, is going to be a very strong team. Providence has had a couple of nice wins. And Creighton defeated Oklahoma. Oklahoma's here. They'll play UCLA next. And another Big East team is here in this tournament as well as Georgetown will take on Florida tonight. For more, here's Andy Katz. And the reason for that, Dan, is that Butler was sort of grandfathered in because when they're in this tournament, they were in a different conference. But already right now, the Big East, 36 and 2, those two losses, only to Marquette. They've already won tournaments, the Legends, Villanova, the Hall of Fame, Providence, the Paradise Jam, Seton Hall, and tonight in the NIT, St. John's host Minnesota at MSG. Well, a great start for a league that, of course, has changed and is bears very little resemblance to the league that it used to be just four or five short years ago, but a great start for the Big East this season. This has not been a pretty game. There have been a lot of missed shots. But Butler has dominated the glass in this game. It's been remarkable. Hicks is fouled and will head to the free throw line. Cameron Woods has done a, a great job on the glass. Roosevelt Jones has grabbed six or seven rebounds. Travis has battled for every board. How about this stat, Jay? And this was as of the last time out. North Carolina has 24 defensive rebounds. Butler has 27 offensive rebounds. They are rebounding more than half of their misses. What's really amazing, and that's what's that's what's gotten them this lead, really, is they've gotten so many extra possessions off North Carolina's turnovers and off of offensive rebounds. That Kennedy Meeks has 10 rebounds in the game, but Alex Barlow has as many uh, rebounds as any other Carolina big guy. He got five. And an empty trip. Carolina now 17 for 31, 55% from the free throw line. This takes the wind out of you to keep yeah. missing these free throws. Dunham, quick shot, and another offensive rebound. Woods over the top of Britt. And a timeout taken by Chris Holtman. Now remember for Chris Holtman, the interim coach, as of now, the interim head coach, Stepping in for Brandon Miller, who's on an, uh, an unspecified medical leave of absence. They've won their first three games, but this is a huge step up in competition. And look at the way they're responding to their first-year head coach. Well, Chris Holman's a really good coach. He was the head coach at Gardner-Webb. He's been an assistant for a number of years. He knows what he's doing, and he knows the Butler way. And I think that the thing that has been most impressive to me about, about Holtman is you never hear him say, I. You know, it's, it's all been we. He's not saying my staff and my this and my that. Everything's we and our and he's kept the focus on the players and a tight-knit group and they have moved on I mean, they, they would love to have Brandon Miller back, but that's not the case right now And they're moving on they're staying positive and they're fighting and this has been one heck of a fight that they've been in and they've taken the fight to North Carolina yep. and they're within Two minutes and 16 seconds of getting the knockout. Well, they're aptly named. They've had a lot of bulldog in them here today. As you said, it has not been a masterpiece, but they have earned everything they have gotten so far in this game. Do, do they need more patience? Dunham took a quick shot on the last trip. Is it time to start holding the ball a little bit more? I guess the answer to that is no. As Shrabis misses, and it's right back over to the heels. Well, I think you do want to be patient. Yeah. If you get a layup, you take it. The follow is good, and it's down to a six-point game. North Carolina has been in this position before where they're making a comeback and managing the clock. Two minutes with a two-possession game is a long time. And what you don't want for Butler is to get tight. You know, they still have to attack but still be smart. And remember, anytime they get fouled, they're sending good free-throw shooters to the line. If it's a free-throw shooting contest, it's advantage Butler. Well, if Butler goes on to win this game, uh, one of the more notable performances will have been delivered by a freshman, Keelan Martin. He's got 15 points today for the Bulldogs. Uh, Keelan Martin's out of Ballard High School in Louisville. And we mentioned before that Chris Holtman said that he is wired to score. All well, the wires are in exactly the right place in this one because he has not hesitated when he's been open to pull the trigger. Jones to inbound it for the Bulldogs. And you know pressure's coming from the heels. 
Long pass to Dunham. It's a foul. That's a foul. And instead, it's a double dribble. Well, how do they not call that a foul? That's not close. Theo Pinson ran right into him. That is a foul. And I don't see how you missed that. So Carolina gets it back. Less than two minutes to go. They once trailed by 14. Got it down to six. But they turn it right back over. Dunham. Another offensive rebound. Man, oh man. A long shot, long rebound. I'm not sure Kellen Dunham needed to pull the trigger on that one. I mean, obviously, if he makes it, it looks like a great shot. But the extra possessions that Butler is getting off the offensive glass, they are just quicker to the ball and have been all game. 29 offensive rebounds for Butler in this game. The, the amazing thing is they've only turned those 29 into 17 second-chance points. Had they done a little bit better on those opportunities, this would be a blowout right now. But then again, if Carolina hits their free throws, they'd be leading. But it's, it's 17 times that North Carolina's got to play more defense instead of taking it down and attacking the button. I mean, North Carolina's not been able to establish any rhythm because they've been playing more defense than often. Yeah. And it's back to eight with a minute and a half to go. Meeks almost lost it. Britt for three. Got it! Timeout Roy Williams. Well, that right-hand shot looks awfully good, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, Nate Britt had a little bit of a hitch with his lefty shot. Roosevelt Jones looks like he's got a little bit of a cramp. Almost a turnover for North Carolina, but Kennedy Meeks finds Nate Britt. Didn't really hesitate. And that was a big three for North Carolina. Now they're going to have an opportunity to put some full-court pressure on, try to get another turnover. And that was evidently not a timeout that the whistle blew, I guess, because of the concern for Jones. So there was no timeout for Carolina there. They've still got one. And Butler, if they get in trouble, still has some timeouts that they can use. So really, for Butler, it's just a question of being smart and being strong with the ball. And a timeout taken by Barlow. Well, if Butler wins this game, the headline is that the Bulldogs dominated on the offensive glass. You know, they've gotten some long rebounds, which you expect to be a little bit of a problem for North Carolina because of the amount of threes that Butler was expected to take, but they got a ton of rebounds around the rim. They got them by being stronger. They got them by never surrendering to an initial contact box out. And they got him by sending more guys to the glass. You know, North Carolina, all five guys on the defense, no matter who it is, have got the rebound. All five guys. And I don't think North Carolina had many possessions where you had all five guys rebounding and alertly going after the ball. You know, your offense doesn't start until you get the rebound and your defensive possession's over. And North Carolina did not end very many of their defensive possessions. Pressure coming from Carolina. The Bulldogs have done a nice job against it. Tough place to inbound the ball, though, for Roosevelt Jones. And he can't run the floor. And they've looked long at times after the initial pass. Well, North Carolina's got to be mindful of that. And the length of Hubert on the ball into Barlow. <laughs> Officials looking for help. And it's going to stay with a butler. Well, this is one of those areas, Dan, where I think there needs to be a rule change. There's a new 10 seconds every time the ball's inbounded before it gets across half court. I don't think that's right. I agree 100%. So right now it should be at five as an example. No because, question. Because right? five seconds, yeah. I agree with you 100%. Well, it should be at less than that because uh, they called the timeout the first time. Right. So right. it should, should be down even further than that. So the officials are now looking to see who the ball went out off of, and I think Carolina might get this ball. It's close. Travis looked like he might have gotten his left hand on it afterwards. Yeah. 
Definitely hit the official, but uh, that doesn't count. Tokudo's hand. It's like it rolled. Uh, he rolled yeah. it off of Travis's left hand there. So the call on the floor is Butler ball. So is there enough evidence in the amount of the officials to overturn the call? That's awfully close. It will stay with Butler. Carolina has got the possession arrow, so if they get a tie-up, they get the ball. That's as good as a turnover. Jones to inbound. They get it to the guy they want to have the ball in Barlow. Boy, he's great at stepping through, isn't he? Good foul. That's the guy they want to put on the line. Jones is not a good free throw shooter. Put him at the line, try to extend the game. He is two for four in this game. Two shots coming for Jones. Two years ago, remember he was hurt last year. Two years ago, he shot 55%. The defensive unit will sit down and the offensive unit will come in. One thing Butler does not want to do. They've got to find Marcus Page right away. You don't want to give up an open three. And he made them both. Good switch by Kellen Dunham. Good help by Shravis, making life tough on Page. And the held ball, the arrow will keep it with Carolina, but that's a ball that Woods just decided he, he needed to get a piece of. He forced that. Carolina has looked so confused on the offensive end. Butler's defense has taken Carolina totally out of what they want to do. Jackson back into the game for Carolina. First thing you watch here is Lobb. The second thing is Marcus Page, the inbounder. Jackson sits back down. It's a seven-point deficit. We're in the final minute with Oklahoma and UCLA coming next here on ESPN2. There it is. Page. Got it! Butler took away the lob to Tokido, but they did not take away the three to Marcus Page. Anytime Marcus Page takes the ball in bounds, they are looking for him. And he did a really good job of reading the defense and fading back into the corner. Now he's being guarded by Cam Woods, just lost him on that screen and faded to the corner and knocked down that left-handed three. That's a huge shot by Marcus Page. Now Cameron Woods is not used to guarding a little guard and just got picked off too easily on that screen. Page's third three of the game. He's just four for 15 overall, but now has 15 points on the afternoon for the Tar Heels. That was the last time out for Roy Williams. And Page basically last year and so far early this season has been the three-point shooting for North Carolina. He's really the only, the only guy coming into this game. He was 7 of 14 from three. The rest of the team was 5 of 30. I think Nate Britt has knocked down a three in this game, but outside of that, that's been it. Well, we showed you Oklahoma getting loose in the hallway a little bit earlier. Here's the competition. The UCLA Bruins waiting just at the end of the court, ready to rush out of the tunnel and get ready for their game against the Sooners in our second game here today here on ESPN2. The number two team of the nation, Wisconsin, takes the court tonight against UAB, also Florida and Georgetown, and we'll have the semifinals for you tomorrow here on ESPN. And North Carolina's only got 45 seconds left, a two-possession game. They're down four. The Tar Heels do not have to foul right away if they get an initial trap and can get a steal, but then they're going to have to foul. They need to extend this game. Into Barlow. 
Attack to Jones. Gonna foul him. And the quick foul will put him on the line again. Just made a pair, but again, historically, a guy who shoots in the mid 50s from the line. That's your best percentage. Yeah. Even though he's a, an incredibly tough player and tough minded, and as you mentioned, knocking down the last two free throws. Percentage wise, you've got to go with him over somebody like Kellen Dunham or Alex Barlow, who are vastly superior shooter. And if you're Carolina, you could see this scene repeating itself three, four times over the last 40 seconds. And how about Roosevelt Jones? Coming in and knocking down three straight free throws under this kind of pressure. Four in a row for Jones at crunch time. Back to six. And Page will go to the rim, draw the foul, and have a chance for three. Oh, that's a bad foul right there by Butler. Dunham jumps out on the screen. And a terrific split by Page. And Alex Barlow, who has done such a magnificent job all year long, the one mistake he makes down at the end of the game is fouling a guy on a layup to stop the clock when they've got no timeouts. It would stop anyway, but now they can set up a press and give them the opportunity for a three-point play here. So Keelan Martin's going to come back into the game. Boy, what a game by Alex Barlow. He was magnificent. They lose their floor leader for the last 37.5 seconds. Barlow, the, the stats are great. The play even exceeds the stats. No question. Yeah. I mean, invaluable for Butler. Now that moves Roosevelt Jones to the point, so he's going to have the ball in his hands. Most likely it will be a lot easier for North Carolina to foul and put on the line if they need to. This one is not over yet. It's a one possession game. One less ball handler in the game with Barlow out. Martin. Travis has it, and Travis will shoot free throws. And Theo Pinson's got to be thinking, what do I have to do to foul somebody in this game? <laughs> and Nate Britt just fouled out of the game for Carolina. So Andrew Travis, the sophomore, headed to the free throw line. He's another guy that has had an outstanding game. You know, the box score is not going to jump out at anybody. What does he have, six points, six rebounds? But he has played his tail off and has battled bigger North Carolina frontline players. He's been all around the ball all game long. He's been physical. He's done a, not a good job. He's done a great job in this game for Buffalo. Travis just one free throw attempt, and he made it in this game. And he's a guy that can stretch the floor, knock down a three. Good soccer player, too. Just kick, you see him kick that? He's trying to tie yeah. his shorts. Well, that's, that's more important. Yeah. <laughs> Make or miss. North Carolina wants, wants to get this ball to the rim. Four-point game, timeout Butler. Next to last timeout for Chris Holtman. It was once a 14-point deficit. Carolina has got it back to it in four. The Bruins and the Sooners waiting patiently for their opportunity in game number two. How good are these tournaments? I mean, in November, to have four ranked teams and a couple others that could be right there playing back to back to back three days in a row. It's just great competition. It's great for the players. Now, the yeah. coaches have to stay up all night game planning and watching film and putting scouting reports together. For the players, it's awesome because you don't have to go to practice. <laughs> you get to play three games in a row. The scouting yeah. reports are usually fairly limited uh, from what you might do during the regular season because you don't have a lot of time. So teams team to, uh, tend to keep things simpler. But at a uh, tournament like the Battle for Atlantis, You've got great teams, so you're playing a named team every game, and that gets players fired up more than anything. And in a place like this, just a great setting, beautiful place here in Atlanta. The line we've heard the most often over the last 48 hours is, tough gig you got here. <laughs> and no matter who's saying it, the only response is right back at you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not like you're breaking yeah. rocks here. <laughs>
Here come the Tar Heels. Joel Berry's in the game right now with Britt fouling out. Almost lost it. Page almost lost it. Page slips. It stays with Carolina, but some precious seconds ticking away. Page was holding his left knee as he got up. He's limping over to the ball. But boy, what a difficult and almost disorganized possession for North Carolina. It wasn't the slip that hurt him. It was then the contact with Shrabis. Watch the left leg, the left knee into the left ankle of Shrabis that looked like caused the discomfort, but he's okay. Lob it to the rim. Johnson's got it. Over and back. Wow. North Carolina has not been able to do anything it wants to do. A difficult lob pass to make. That was the play. The screen down by Marcus Page to get the lob to Bryce Johnson. And then they wind up throwing it away. They got a foul right away here. Go for the steal, but if not, foul right away. Page is still hurting. He's still grimacing and flexing his leg. Got to get it in. Use their last time out. Now what a moment this would be in the early season for the Butler Bulldogs. If they can pull off an upset of this magnitude and advance into the semifinals here with the battle for Atlantis. And they would not be in a position to do that had they not gotten the effort they have gotten today from Alex Barley. He has fouled out. That came very recently, but he did just about everything positive that a player can do in a game. Well, in a lot of ways, he controlled the game. He controlled it on the offensive end, took opportunities, knocked down a floater, a three. Really controlled the pace of the game when Butler had the ball. And then defensively, chasing Marcus Page all over the floor, getting through screens, being there on the catch, forcing him to put the ball down. And he picked up some fouls here and there and wound up fouling out of the game. But that line, to have 17 points to five rebounds are huge, and knocking down four of eight from three. And Alex Barlow, in my judgment, has been the MVP in this game. Keelan Martin came in, did a great job off the bench for this Butler team, and interim coach Chris Holtman. But the MVP is Alex Barlow. And Alex Barlow, today's player of the game, presented by Coca-Cola. 16 seconds left. And it's Butler ball after the uh, backcourt violation for North Carolina. The turnovers are dead even at 19 apiece, but boy, it feels like the Carolina turnovers have been more costly. And, and again, the rebounding has just been a disaster for Carolina today. Butler with 29 offensive rebounds and a 56-40 rebounding edge overall. And finally, the foul on Dunham. How do you size Butler up in the Big East? We talked about Villanova quality. Obviously, Jay Wright has another very good team. How do you see the, the Big East sorting itself out? Well, if they play, if Butler plays like this, you're looking at a very good basketball. This is a very good basketball team. And are they great? I wouldn't say that, but they're very good. And Villanova's the best team. I think Georgetown is going to be really good. John Thompson III has three freshmen that have come into his program that are really going to contribute. And L.J. Peak is going to be a big-time player. I mean, he's starting right now and, and is a special basketball player. And two big free throws for Dunham. Got to have a three here. Page. They're swarming him. He'll force it up. Martin's got it. One last foul, and the Butler Bulldogs are on their way to the semifinals. North Carolina, they'll still have some great games coming. They're still going to play either Oklahoma or UCLA tomorrow, but you can see on the faces of the Tar Heels how it's sinking in that they have been relegated to the other half of the bracket. Well, North Carolina's got to be having some flashbacks to last season. Offensively, they were poor in this game. Gave up some offensive rebounds. That was very difficult, but on the offensive end, North Carolina got absolutely nothing in their half-court offense. What an effort by Butler. 
The Bulldogs in advance, 74 to 66, to take on the winner of our next game. Coming your way in about 20 minutes, the Oklahoma Sooners and the UCLA Bruins are still to come. Chris Holtman with his first big time victory as the interim head coach of the Butler Bulldogs as they take down the number five team in the country, North Carolina. Still to come, Oklahoma and UCLA tonight. It's UAB Wisconsin and Florida Georgetown. And we'll have Butler against the winner of the next game in the first semifinal tomorrow at 1 Eastern over on ESPN. The other semifinal of three, the championship game, comes your way on Friday afternoon. Let's go to Andy Katz, who's with Chris Holtman and Alex Barlow. All right, thank you, Dan. And Chris, when I saw you on the flight down, you said, look, we haven't played this kind of competition yet, so I don't know how good we are. How do you assess Butler after this upset? I know we're really tough, Andy. We are really tough. Um, I got so much respect for Coach Williams and, and the job that he does and that program is. But uh, the dudes in our locker room are really tough guys, and uh, that's what this game was about. And uh, I'm really proud of them. This guy next to me down the line, they're just... I can't say enough how proud I am of them. Alex, when you looked at facing North Carolina, what did you guys have to do well, especially early in this game, to knock them back on their heels? Yeah, we, we just had to come out and play tough, uh, make them take tough shots, uh, and keep them off the glass. You know, they're a really big, really athletic team. They like to get a bunch of offensive rebounds, and I think we did a good job of that in the first half, and it kept the game close, and uh, then we kind of took it from there. You've been a part of a lot of special wins over the last couple of years. How much does this one epitomize the Butler way? I think it, it, it's a definition, by the way. We came out, people didn't give us a chance, and we just fought, and we just played tough for 40 minutes, and it gave us a chance to win the game, and we were fortunate enough to come out with the victory. Chris, you haven't been here that long. What have you learned about this so-called mystical Butler way that was effective today? Well, you know, I have, I have so much respect for what uh, Butler has done in the past. I'm really close to the players and coaches. You know, we, we hope, we've tried to be really good stewards of the program that, that's kind of been given to us. We hope uh, all the former players and coaches are proud of what we're doing. Uh, this is about them and what they've done over the years. And we're just, you know, we got we got a big one tomorrow, but we're gonna enjoy this one for, uh, for a few minutes. Appreciate it, we'll see you tomorrow in the semifinal. Okay, thanks Andy. Back to you, Dan. Andy, thank you very much. You can see uh, how Chris Holtman feels about it. Congratulations to the Bulldogs on to the semifinals tomorrow coming your way you can see them the Sooners are on the court the Bruins are on the court Oklahoma UCLA is coming your way next here on ESPN 2 for Jay Billis Andy Katz and our entire ESPN crew I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching come on back and join us again soon but for now let's go right back to the studio